Welcome back. So let's begin. The first step is to slice up our PSD. But before we do that, we need a folder to work with, correct? So I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this PSD WordPress Tutorial. All right. And within it, I'm going to add a new folder called IMG for image. And we're going to place all of our slice images in here. So close that out. And we're all set to go. So I'm going to open up Photoshop. Now this is going to be very real world. I haven't uh, formatted this any more than I normally would. Now if you're going to sell this template on a place like ThemeForce, you would need to organize. But if you're like me, you are kind of bad about, you know, adding folders and you do that at the very end. So let me show you. This is kind of pretty realistic. And from the designers I see, this is actually quite common. You know, we're, we're always thinking ahead and and this is what we end up with. And then afterwards, you go and clean everything up. But I wanted to keep it as is to uh, keep a real world example. So let's go over. There are two ways to slice up a Photoshop file. The first tool is the slicing tool. And if I click on the crop tool and hold it down, we have the option of manually going to each item, slicing it out like so, things like that. Now, many people swear by it. I used to do that, and I've even had tutorials on NetTouch that demonstrate that method. But I've kind of come to realize it's, for me, it's a little bit slower. So you're free to use whichever option you like. I'm going to use just more of a simple method where uh, you select an area, you create a new file, you save it, and you're done. Or you crop it down. So for instance, let's get started. Let's begin by slicing out. Now, I'm not going to use these images because I know that they're only sample images and I know that I can grab some from NetTouch that I, we can use. So those are 200 by 200. We're not even going to worry about those because they are not necessary. So I'm going to come up and the first thing I'd like to grab is right here, this JW logo. So I'm going to zoom in. And we're going to find this. So I'm going to hit my arrow tool and I'm going to make sure auto select is on and I'm going to click on it. And it's going to come down here and you're going to see that we have a text file, a text file, a text layer, and then a background image. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these by using the shift button and I'm going to hit Apple E and that's going to merge them into one file like so. Now, if I hold down. Uh, Apple and press on this little thumbnail here, it's going to select the entire image for me or the entire layer. So now all I need to do is copy it by pressing Apple C. And now I'm going to create a new layer. I'm sorry, a new file by pressing Apple N or I can come up to file new. And what's great about this is it's recognized what we've copied and it's set the width and height dimensions exactly to those values. So we hit OK. I hit Apple V to paste it in or come up to edit and paste. And now we have our selected image. Now, what I would like to do is I want to make sure that there's no white background like you see here. So I'm going to deselect this background. And now it's on top of a transparent background. So the next step is to save this for the web. So I'm going to go up to file and go to save for web and devices, or I can hit shift option command S. Okay. And because we're saving it as a tr with a transparent background, we need to save it as a PNG 24. This is the only file format that will allow that. And now you can see that transparent background. So we have a total of 9.79 K. That's a little high, but we're going to, that'll be okay. So I'm going to hit save and we need to save it into PSD to WordPress tutorial images. And I'm going to save this as uh, logo.png. All right, congratulations, you've just done your first layer. Now, we are finished with this, so I can go up to file and click close, or I can press command W, or the Apple symbol and W. Don't save, because we already have. I'm going to deselect this. Once again, we could come up to E to edit and find deselect. You'll find that you use the keystroke so much that you don't even use these tools. Like so, I cannot even find the deselect there to select and then come on down to deselect or press command D. So I'm going to zoom out and we've gotten our first one. The next step is I would like to grab these little navigation icons. So once again, I'm going to click one with auto select turned on. 
and we come up here. So if I try pressing command and clicking on the thumbnail, once again, it selects that entire layer. So you're going to learn this kind of process for you. Uh, you merge, then you command click, then you copy it, then you create a new layer, then you paste it, and then you save for the web. And you'll get to the point where you can do this very fast. So I'm going to copy it, create a new layer with, with command N, paste it in with command V, turn off the background layer, and then I'm going to hit shift option command S or file save for web and devices. All right. Save right here. And because this is a navigation, I'd like to organize my images as best as possible. So why don't we do something like, uh, let's come back, cancel out. I'm going to come back to our tutorial. And within images, let's create a new folder. And we're going to call this one nav. All right. Go back to where we were. Save it as a PNG 24. Under nav, I'm going to save this one as home. That's finished. We can press Command W or come up to File and Close. So it's a little more, maybe a little more intensive than using the slice tool, but I find when you do it quite a bit, you get to the point where you can just knock it out like that. So I'm going to deselect this by pressing Command D or coming up to Select and Deselect. Next step, let's do this little camera right here. So select it, copy it, new layer, paste it in, deselect the background, save it for the web, and this time within the navigation, we're going to save this one as camera. Because, all right, and deselect. See how quickly? Now let's do it even quicker. So this is a little speak buckle. Select, copy, new, paste, Deselect the background, save for web, and call this one contact. All right, close it, deselect, very quick. Now we need to get this little search icon. Copy, new, paste, deselect, save for web, save, and this one is gonna be search, I believe but I do not want this in the navigation section. So let's come on back to IMG and I'm gonna call this search icon. All right, close that out by pressing command W, don't save, command D to deselect. Good job. So the next one I want are these cool little uh, talk bubbles right here. So once again, if this is not working and you click on it and it doesn't go to the layer, make sure you have auto select turned on. Click on it, and this brings up this layer, like so. Once again, per usual, new, paste, deselect, save. And this one is going to be called, let me take a look at my notes, commenticon.png. Close that out, and deselect. So what's the next step? We could get this image here, but I'm going to grab that from somewhere else. Next thing I want is this another rarely updated blog. Now we could use some kind of font rendering JavaScript file, but I think it's easiest if we just grab the image. So I'm going to click on it and it's going to bring up this text file. So if I deselect it, you'll see. So once again, I'm going to Apple click it, even with text with, I keep calling them files, even with text layers, we can select them and do it the same way as we would with an image like so, but I want to make sure that I remove that background. Now, there's something to consider when you when you are using transparent backgrounds. If you're unfamiliar, uh, all modern browsers uh, allow you to use PNG 24 file format. On the other hand, IE6 does not allow this. Now, there are ways, actually rather easy ways to get around it using JavaScript files or some other methods, and that's what most people use. But considering that, that brings us to an important point that I want to go over with you for 30 seconds. IE6 is a decade old. How much longer should we be compensating for such an old browser? Now, the answer to that, really, some people would just say, oh, completely give it up. Well, that doesn't really work when you have a client whose community base still you know, is comprised of 40% of IE6 users. You can't give it up that way. 
the way we can progress forward is to stop using IE6 compliance, maybe in personal sites and things like that. Now, taking a look at this site, it's a personal blog. It's hypothetically for me, and I know that my audience are going to be people around my age, meaning in their mid to late 20s, family members, and similar. Now, I also write quite a bit about web development, so I can pretty much 100% rest assured that all of my readers are going to be using modern browsers. So I have decided, and this is the great thing about designing a personal site, I've decided I'm not even going to worry about IE6 because it's going to be less than 1% of all. All, uh, viewers. So I can completely knock that out and not even worry about the transparency. Now, if you're building this for a client or even for a site like ThemeForest, you should strongly consider compensating. And to do that, you would just download a, a JavaScript file. There's many available around the web. Just go on net.tets plus and do a search for IE, IE6 transparency. Okay, so that's important to get out of the way. Let's continue on and save that. It's a transparent ping. And we're going to save this as slogan. All right, close that out. So deselect that. Let's see what else. We need to get these arrows. We need to get this pencil icon. What else? Mm, maybe this little background right here. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll just use a, uh, a solid color for that. We may come back. So I'm going to select this pencil icon. And where is it? Hmm. Let me find it. Let's try it one more time. Click on it. There it is, pencil. You should be a pro at this by now if you're working along. And I'm going to save this one as pencil.png. All right, what else? Hmm, these arrows. We have a left and a right arrow. Save it as left-arrow.png and deselect and select another one. And this is going to be right arrow. Save right-arrow.png. Close it out and deselect. Okay, so we've got our logo, our three images up here, our slogan, the comment icon. We could get this little dot, but I don't even know if I'm going to use that. Uh, we have two arrows. Hmm. I'm not going to get these because I think I decided to just use text. And I'm not going to get these items because we can get them somewhere else. What else? Hmm. Ah, Twitter icon. We could get that. And other than that, I think we're all set to go. So let's scroll on down and find our Twitter icon. This is being a little strange on me. There we go. Okay, select it. And we have our follow icon, which is text, and then the Twitter bird. And then we also have a background. So let's see where that is. Okay, so we have that one, and then follow, and then Twitter. So I'm going to hold down the command key and I'm going to hit the Twitter bird, the follow, and this background. And I'm going to hit, app, I'm sorry, command or Apple E, and that will merge those into one. So now when I deselect it, it's all one. So I'm going to click it, copy, new, paste it in, remove the background. You see we've been using all transparent backgrounds. Now that increases the file size somewhat, but it also gives you quite a bit more flexibility. Uh, if I knew this was a solid color on the website, I could just use white. But what if you decide down the line to change the background, then you have to go back to your image and change the background of the image to the background of the website. So in this case, I think it's okay. It's not too complicated. We can deal with 14K is a little high for such a small image, but it's okay. Save it. And this one is going to be called Twitter-Follow. And I believe, at least for now, that's going to be okay. Now, we do need to do one more thing. See if you can figure out what I missed. Okay, maybe a couple things. Uh, first of all, I didn't get the background at all. So you see this thing we have right here? Now, this is going to change slightly by the time we get to the end. But for now, let's just grab that out. And what I'm just going to do here is just crop it out because it could be multiple layers. 
And I'm just going to grab a section, a tiny section, because we will then repeat it using CSS. So something like that's fine. OK, and we will save this for the web. All right. Now, this does not need to be a PNG 24 because it's not transparent. Additionally, I'm using subtle gradients here. And what you'll find is actually uh, PNG format may not always be the best for uh, transparency. Now, the 24 uh, method actually renders transparency, I'm sorry, renders gradients perfectly. But sometimes you'll find that if you use the JPEG format, it will be somewhat smaller. So let's check. We have 4.32 with 24. Let's go to JPEG. And now you see it's 25% the size, and it's still the same quality. So keep that in mind. It may not sound like a lot to you, but it actually is. And I'm going to save this as bg.jpg. Now, I want to make sure that I don't close this out because this is my original file. So I'm going to press Command-Option-Z to back up. All right. So I'm going to hide this by pressing Control-Command-H or come up to Photoshop and hide Photoshop. I'm giving you all the keystrokes because I'd like you, if you aren't already, to get in the habit of using keystrokes. It'll save you so much time. And this is what we end up with, okay? This is our sliced up website. We don't need anything else, though we will come back to Photoshop to add a bit more. So there it is. We've done the first part of this, the slicing up everything else we can accomplish with CSS, hopefully. So I will see you in the next lesson where we begin converting to HTML.